I'm going to show you all how you can make your colors pop in your images. And in order to do this, you need to make sure that you have a camera and in your camera, you set it to raw file. Most cameras, most modern cameras will have the option to save it as a raw file. If you can't do it with a raw file, then don't worry about it. There's still other ways. So just like always, you want to make sure you have your two files. I have my raw file right here. And then I also have a JPEG of the image. You can easily drag this into Photoshop. You can either click and drag it into Photoshop or you can go to file and open. That works just the same. So if you're new to this and you've never done it before, you will get the screen right here to set it up. And then I'm going to go ahead and press OK. You'll get the welcome screen and then you want to press get started. And if you wanted to, you could put it on full screen by toggling the button. I'm not going to go over every single tool and option because this video can drag on for a really long time. So I'm just going to keep it simple and short and I'm going to go over the main things that you really need to know. So first things first, you have your histogram right here. If you want to, you can edit it. You can change things by holding left click and then changing it the way you want it to go. So you can either go left or right. The other thing as well, if you ever make a mistake or you need to go back, you can go to the three dots right here and then reset to default. And then this will put everything back to normal. Any changes that you apply, it will save it to the file. So you will need to reset it if you wanted to go back to normal. And you can also use other shortcut keys just to zoom in. For example, you can use the Alt key and scroll up. You can use the magnify tool to go up and down to zoom into the image and then you can right click on it and then fit to view and then that will reset it. You also have profiles right here. These are really handy and helpful because if you click on the browse profiles, you can easily get yourself some templates that have already been made for you. And this can save you time if you just want to quickly apply something. So for example, if you wanted a black and white, you can just easily get it from here. Go back on this right here. So return to edit panel. So let's start to apply some of these settings. So we're going to change the exposure and you'll have the slider right here. You just slide it left and right, depending on if you want a higher exposure or low exposure. And let's apply some contrast as well. Contrast usually makes things look really nice and gives it a more darker tone. The highlights is all about if you want it to be really clear or you want it to be more bright. So sometimes if you put it on 100%, this is absolutely great for black and white pictures. But since ours is in black and white, we're going to leave it on, let's say, minus 38. So we can still see some of the things in the background as well. We're going to edit the shadows. So this will, if you put it to the max, it'll make it more clear. But if you turn it down a little bit to, let's say, 9, we're also going to change some of the whites. And you just pretty much want to play about with it. You just want to keep adjusting the settings, see what you like and see what you prefer. So as you can see, I can make it a lot more lighter just by changing the whites. Now the blacks, this will change dramatically. You can notice the difference. This will let you either go really bright or really dark. We're going to keep it just below, let's say minus four. That makes it look a lot more clear. We're also going to apply the texture. Now the texture, clarity and dehaze are absolutely amazing. I love these and I will show you exactly why. So if I zoom in to the image and we're going to apply a texture of nine and we're going to put the clarity on 22. And as you can see already, there's a big difference. Which leads me on to the next thing, and that is the preview right down here. If you wanted to, you could cycle through the preview. So you can have the before and after. This is before, this is after. You can cycle through each one. So this cuts it up in half. You can put it to this sort of preview, this one, and the normal one. You can also do it side by side, or you could just toggle it off and on. The next one that we're going to change is dehaze. And the way that I like to think of this one is how much darkness you want it to apply. Now, the lower this is, the brighter it will be, the higher it is, the darker it will be. Finally, we can get ourselves some vibrance. I normally put this to about seven. So if we set a seven and then saturation, you don't want to go too crazy on this, but at the same time, you also want to give it a little bit of color because it does seem like it has lost some color. 
At the top, you also have the temperature. So if you want to, what I normally like to do is I like to highlight this and press Control C to copy it in case anything goes wrong. And then you can play about with if you want it to be very warm or if you want it to be very cold. It all depends on your image, but normally at default, it looks pretty good. You can also give it a tint if you want to. This is optional, but usually a tint will just make it between either really purple or really green or you can mix and match to get different results. Next up, we're going to quickly look at curves. With the curves, you can apply it to the first one, which is this one. You have some other ones like point curve. You'll have the channel curve as well. So red, green, and blue. And this will just allow you to get different results. So for example, if you go on the red channel, let's say you want it to be a little bit more red. So you just move it slightly up. And if you wanted to, you can click on this and you could change it in here. So we're just going to set it to linear and leave it the way it was. You can go through these yourself if you wanted to play about with them. For example, grain. And then you have the filter, for example, this. You could play about with it. You have color mixer. This will allow you to have the reds, oranges, yellows, greens, and so much more. The detail, you can also go to sharpness and you can increase the sharpness or decrease it. You have noise reduction and then color noise reduction. Next up, we're just going to talk about the tools. So just like normal, you have the crop and rotate. This is really simple. You just either crop the image or you rotate it. So if we click on this and let's say we want to crop it to just this, we draw ourselves a box and then we crop it to what we prefer. So let's say we only wanted this and then to apply it, all you got to do is just click on one of the tools and it will apply it. Another thing that you have is the spot removal. So just like the healing brush tool, if you have an area on the image that you wanted to remove. So for example, if we just zoom into that area right there, put it to 200 and then you can hold space bar, use the hand tool and move up. Let's say we didn't want this bit right here. All we've got to do is just select a sample and then it will copy the textures from here over to there. Now, if you want to get rid of this, you just press delete and then that will get rid of it. You have the size, feather and opacity as well, we, you can mess about with. And another thing, if you want to, you can always go back to the crop. So if you're not happy with it, you can just leave it on what it was before. And you have the aspect ratio here. You can either have custom, original, or you can have one by one and so much more. Next up, you will have the brush and you have quite a lot of options with these. There is a lot of options with the brush tool. And this is if you individually wanted to apply different areas to have different effects. So for example, if you wanted, let's say the parrot right here, you just drag yourself a point. And then let's say you wanted to decrease the temperature, it will apply it to that area right there. Now we're going to reset brush. You have a radial filter as well. And it's pretty simple. You just get yourself a radius. You can edit the points. And let's say we only wanted the parrot to have some of the filters. And let's say we wanted to have a higher exposure. You just increase it for this bit right here. You can also invert things. So mask options, this will invert it. You can keep it as an overlay or you can disable it. You can also invert it. So it applies it to that bit right there. Once again, we're going to reset it. And if you are happy with it, then you can go ahead and press this button right here. And this will allow you to save the image. And then I'm going to go ahead and press save.